Welcome to sunny Winter Haven, Florida. I'm Lane Dog Bowers, and today we're talking everything about barefoot skiing speeds. And this is another free uh, virtual ski school. It's a little different, actually, because no video was submitted. But I'll show you in a minute. If you guys are interested in barefoot skiing speeds for about anything you can think of, I'm actually going to go over it. it. There were so many... Uh, items in this request that I didn't want to go over it just once. I wanted to share it uh, with everybody so everybody can get uh, an advantage in their skiing. So uh, let's uh, start by reading. Uh, we got a, um, a request here from Andy um, and it says, uh, hey Lane, thanks for all your emails. Keeps, uh, keeps me pumped and ready for the upcoming season. Hey, one thing I always struggle with, especially as I get my wife or son to drive for me instead of my usual uh, barefoot skiing buddy, uh, is the speeds. Can you help me, uh, I assume he means, with a good guide to go by. I'm 57 years old, I'm in pretty good shape, and I weigh 167 pounds, depending on the beer versus exercise ratio. Uh, we always, uh, we almost always ski on the boom, set high as we can with a five-foot handle. All right, so here's some of the things he wants to go over here, guys, and I thought, and what I'm doing is, uh, you'll see this, uh, but first, before, well, let's let's go through. Let's go ahead and go through this. Um, he's talking about uh, two feet speed. Now, before you do this, I want to explain. Actually, before I go through this, I want to explain to you guys. If you, if during quarantine that everyone's all screwed up, you can see my hair is about three times as high as normal because uh, no haircutting places and all that. So you can tell how long we've been in quarantine by the length of my hair. But anyway. Um, I, I, during this entire quarantine time, one thing I thought I'd do to give back to all the barefooters is give, uh, and we have a paid virtual ski school where people can submit videos. I analyze them for them, send them back, and help them with their barefooting in, so, in case they can't get down here for ski school, whatever. So that is on my site at the, and it just click on virtual ski school as it shows right here. But here's how you can get, if you want your own personal virtual ski school analysis, here's what you do. Um, Email the footersedge at gmail.com with the subject line free virtual ski school. The reason is I have so many of them that it's actually I'm getting a little behind, but I have to be able to look up these uh, search in my Gmail when there's so many of these. So they're very hard to find with hundreds of other emails coming in. So please put virtual free virtual ski school in the heading. Include a link to a high quality uh, video that either Vimeo or YouTube or something and then state specifically what exact question you would like me to help you improve. Um, I'm breaking protocol here and being extra generous because this wasn't just one thing. It's literally about 10 or 20 things that uh, he wants help with, but I still want to uh, help him out. And then mention uh, that you do not mind if I share the video analysis with others. He didn't mention that, so I had to ask permission to share all this with you guys. And then if you guys aren't already on uh, getting my free barefooting tips newsletter, do me a favor and go to uh, thefootersedge.com. I'll show you. And then all you got to do is uh, go there, scroll down here, put your name and email right here, and it'll immediately give you access to my uh, newsletter as well as um, your free ebook, which you can download. So make sure you do that. And then uh, do me a favor also is please share these videos that I'm doing for free to help you guys as much as I can during these challenging times. Please do me a favor and share it with somebody else. And what I've actually put this on the page that you'll, you'll actually be seeing this on right below the video that you're going to watch. Uh, as soon as this is done, I'll upload it to the page. And you can copy and paste this and email it to a buddy. Uh, dear Barefooting Friend, as you know, I'm well connected and would only send you the best insider info ever. Go to the Footer's Edge, enter your name and email so you can download Lane Dog Bauer's free Barefooting Tips ebook. Be the best barefoot on your lake. By the way, this is what it is. I give it to you in digital form so you guys will be so excited. There's literally thousands of dollars of free information from paid lessons that I share with other people just from my experience to help you guys. Um, and then uh, you'll also get all the latest barefooting tips, like how you can learn to barefoot at super slow speeds without falling, world-class tumble turns in 20 minutes, and how to learn back barefooting at super slow speeds and without uh, falling. Sincerely, your studly, 
well-connected, barefooting friend, insert your name there. Boom. There it is. So let's get down to it here. I actually have made a page um, that I, I put this uh, his request in here. I think I blocked out. Yeah, I, I don't have his last name in here. So one thing I did just to, to help you guys out, even to make this easier, that's why it took me a little bit before I could even get to this, is I've actually, if you notice, here's the things he requests speeds on. And what I'm gonna, what I did is I actually click. If you click on it, you literally, it'll take you directly to the article on that. And so even though I'm gonna give you a direct uh, speed, as if you're this guy, he's already explained some of the critical parts. Andy has uh, shared that uh, he's talking about a boom that he's got set pretty high. And for me, uh, that's five to seven feet. I like seven feet more than five feet if. You have a two foot rope extension you can put on your five foot handle. So that, I, why do I do that? Because a five foot handle and a seven foot rope is so high that unless you're doing, you know, uh, side slides or, um, you know, some of the, um, some of the freestyle stuff, it's a little too sh short. So we go seven feet when we're helping people with other stuff that allows us to go slower speeds, safer, easier to learn. Bam. So here's what he says. He said, uh, he says, um, you know, standard two feet. So, uh, you know, he's saying he's 167 pounds. What's funny is it's really, it, it, for those of you who have been on my, uh, watched a lot of my videos, you got my um, my newsletter and you follow my ebook or you got my videos, um, you guys know that, that your weight divided by 10 add 20 is not a rule. Uh, that I go by for this it probably he's taught the standard two feet 36 37 something like that is what that article would be but as you know as from watching my videos like how to barefoot behind the boat at 23 miles an hour I don't like starting two foot speeds fast there's nothing wrong with that if you have really good form but if you really want to check your form try slow speeds 167 pounds let's just mark this down as I would say low 30s and if you really want to challenge yourself, drop that speed down even further. Go sub 30 miles an hour. If you can't do that, your glide's probably off. So that's one. it's fun. It's easy. You're not going to kill yourself. If you go 40 miles an hour and make a mistake, psh, you're probably going to get hurt. So here's number one. How fast should I go on two feet? People are always asking that. What if I weigh 200 pounds? What if I weigh 250 pounds? Well, as you guys know from watching me teach Phil Fister, at 385 pounds, six foot eight, I got that guy barefooting at uh, 35 and a half miles an hour, I think, on the seven foot rope. So do the math. There's just no equation for that. So that's th that's less than the speed that our, the standard formula says for Andy here, 36, 37. So I think Andy at 167 pounds, you can barefoot easily and cleanly and be able to see all the way down to your feet if you're in calm water. And with good form, a good glide, you should be able to go 30, let's just say 32 miles an hour is just a, across the board. And if you're 185 or you're 200 pounds, if you got the boom set up right, good form, also, I would say 32 miles an hour. If you're, if you're 300 pounds, honestly, if you're in good form, you should be able to go 34, 35 miles an hour, okay? And all the way up, like I said, to 400. Now, one foot including toehold. A lot of this, and if you guys notice on the site here, I'll go over here. I actually link it to uh, my article. If you click on that, it'll actually take you uh, to uh, the information on one foot. Here's another one. And um, But uh, on one foot, again, I like this boom really high. And I would say, you know, for a guy like this, there's if you have to go faster then 37 to 38 to get your one foots dialed in and feel comfortable, you probably aren't using the right form. You're probably a standard thing on on one foots and even toe holds. For a guy who's 167 pounds, that's like a great weight for barefooting. You should be able to do these one foots and toe holds at 37 miles an hour, uh, th maybe 38 at the most. Now, as you get heavier, you, you are going to need some more speed because you're on half the surface area, but... Be careful because a lot if with a high boom and stuff, you should be able to do this without cranking that speed up too ridiculously high. If you have to, I'd slow it down. One of the biggest things that affects toehold speeds, like I know there's somebody out there who's going to go, no way, I can't do this under 42, 43 miles an hour for one foot. 
I used to have a student, Shannon Heller, and um, she's now married and has a family and everything. But I remember the day she, when she was a young girl, literally, uh, I, I'm guessing 15, mile, 15 years old, her dad used to pull her 46 miles an hour for one foot on the boom. And I, got, I eventually changed her form up so dramatically that I made her go back to the swing, even though she was trying out for the U.S. barefoot team. And I got her speeds down long line to 30, 36 miles an hour for a toehold. So uh, I, so anyway, and it's, it, it isn't about the weight. It's about how good your glide is, how good your form is. But because I'm, I told you I'd give you speeds on this, um, I'd say that let's call let's call one foot uh, for a guy who's 167 pounds. Let's call that 37 miles an hour. Toehold, same thing. Side slide. All right, so you can click on here. I have got an entire page on side slides that is so cool. It's unbelievable. And I don't want to go through this right now, but it turns out, as you see these uh, uh, foot skis, is, um, he actually mentions, Andy, in this article, that he has those. And it's a little different if you have different. Uh, it's, if you use the rubber ones, be really careful. Those are dangerous for side slides. I wouldn't even use those. Uh, you could really get hurt. But if you're on the the uh, foot skis, um, you know, it goes over all that stuff in there. But let's just say side slides on shoe skis, because I know he's not, he says he's still learning this, but honestly, you're not on your feet. So I wouldn't even try that until you've got one foot and toe holds down. But just because you asked, I'm going to say so. Side slides, we go kind of faster just because you want to have, um, you want to have that nice light feeling, even though you got both feet on the water and you've got your feet sideways. So even at uh, 160, 70 pounds, I'd say we're talking pretty much one foot speed. I'd say 37, 38 for a 167 pound guy. Uh, heavier than that, you know, and it's more fun when your form is really good and you can go bouncy, trouncy. But let's just say side slides. Let's put that one at uh, maybe one mile an hour faster than one foot speed. So one to two. So we'll say 38 or 39 miles an hour. And with the boom really high. And you can go slower than that if you if it seems too scary. But let's do that. Now, if you're on the foot skis, that's done around, I'd say, 30, 32 miles an hour. Those are very slippery. Uh, you might have to go a little slower, actually, on those 29, 30, just barely over for the side slide, and you should be really good. As you get very proficient on the shoe skis, actually 34, 35 feels real good. Back deep, let's go. Uh, of course, over here, uh, I'm using a notepad here just because I want it nice and large so you guys can read this. But let's go over the back deep. Again, over here, I've got so many videos. Uh, you guys need my ebook. You guys should have the video, but let's just, I'm just going to skip all that. Let's go back deep, gliding with the rope on your foot. So really what he's talking about is how to drive for the start. And that I've got a whole nother article on. It's uh, the, the back deep is one of the most difficult things to drive. So you're going to have to go easy on your family if they're driving for you. Back deep with one foot on the rope, let's call it 8 to 10 miles an hour. And as I've gone over in the link in the other videos, you're looking as you have one foot on the rope, one off, a plume of water coming in between the legs. If there's no plume, you're probably going too fast. If the water's streaming over your crotch and over your back, you're going to let go because you're out of air. So we're looking at about 8 to 10 miles an hour. It's not a speed that you can get on your speedometer. It's a feel, and you have to visually see it as a driver to get that speed right. And then as you go to plant, you want to go from 8 to 10 miles an hour, and as they're setting their feet down and out, you want to gently go a couple miles an hour faster, let's say 10 to 12 miles an hour while they're setting their feet, and do nothing until their feet are steady, not jumping, a steady plume coming off them. So back deep with the foot on the rope, 8 to 10. Back uh, your initial plant speed, let's call it 10 to 12. Back cruising, this is what I love. If you got a 7-foot high, boom, a 7-foot rope. Regardless, if you're 350 pounds or you're 167 pounds, I like to have that that first time barefooter, and for a while until you can go, until you can go for a good thirty second ride without falling, that boat speed should be around 24, 25 miles an hour. It seems crazy slow, 
But if you guys watch the videos I do with Zane and everything, there's with the high boom, that's exactly what I want you to do. Once you get more confident, start bumping that speed up. But if you start falling, you're going too fast. So the key here is progressing without falling. So here we go. Back cruising speed. Let's say if you're if you haven't gone 30 sec if you had to have a 30 second run, your speed's 24 to 26 miles an hour. If you can go over and over that, then I'd start bumping it up to high 20s and possibly 30 miles an hour okay if you've already done back one foots and stuff like that you're comfortable back cruising speed is probably you should be like 32 33 miles an hour until you have perfect form bouncy trouncy moving your feet in and out all those good things back one foot again we're jumping ahead of the issue because if you're learning these other things back one foot on foot skis regardless of weight you want to start on two feet. It's, there's so much to this, as you guys can guess. That's why I didn't want to just answer this in an email and share. I want to put this in a video so you all can learn. Whether you're 350 pounds or you're 167 pounds, your back one foot speed on foot skis, if you have something else that's different, on foot skis, it would be around 28 miles an hour, maybe 29, maybe 30 at the very most. So back one foot on foot skis, 28 and if you're actually a 167 pound guy if you start to feel slippery your forms off so stop doing that you want to work on your setup but what i do with people when they're on foot skis is i take them up to their most comfortable foot ski two foot position which is usually around 25 26 and as they start shifting the weight turning the handle i bump at 25 maybe 28 miles an hour regardless of your weight on your feet, same concept with a high boom is we start at your uh, super comfortable barefoot speed. And if you're if you're not super comfortable at 32 miles an hour, backwards 30, 32, you're not ready. You can start setting up for the back one foot, but don't don't go up to a back one foot speed. But if you're on your bare feet, 30, uh, I, I'd say for a back, I'm going to give it to you first and then explain it. A back one foot, let's call 35, 36 miles an hour for Andy here um, and you could go a little bit um, faster if you're a much bigger guy like 200 uh, 250 even 300 pounds but the key is good form and you do not want to go faster than your form allows so you want to ease these speeds up so you start at the most comfortable you don't if you just take that boat speed you say oh let's practice one back one foot today Lane told me to go 36 miles an hour if you pull a guy who's not ready for it from zero and then ease him up into 36 miles an hour before he even gets his weight shift or anything, it's going to be a disaster fest. It's going to be a Rodney King beating. This guy's going to have a concussion probably, and he's going to be sucking Advil all day long. So I wouldn't recommend that. You need to ease into the back one foot. That's why it's so critical, you guys. I need specific questions, specific uh, video on what you're working on. That will help me. So it's hard for me to be more specific than that, but let's call this... 36 miles an hour for Andy on a back one foot. Caveat, be careful, kids. Don't get hurt while you do this. Back to front. Got a whole article on that in here. I uh, I link it to it. So back to front uh, is something I love teaching. Uh, I'm going to say for Andy here, let's just simplify this. There's so much to this. Let's call this 33 miles an hour for your first back to front. Foot skis. 25 miles an hour. On foot skis, you want to slow from 25 and slowly get down to 20 or lower. On your feet, you want the slowest possible speed that you feel very comfortable with. Not bogged down, not deep in the water, but just feel very light. You can move around bouncy trouncy. I'm going to call that 33 miles an hour for Andy. Even though I don't think you're quite ready for this, you got to get it on the uh, shoe skis a little better. But uh, if you've done this, shoe skis... Like I said, we want to do about 25, 26 miles an hour and work our way down and then onto your feet. First one, let's say 33 miles an hour. Uh, all, and do all these speeds uh, change if we go long line instead of the boom? Yes, they do. Uh, they all change, but I would like to answer those specifically per a m much more specific question when you're ready for it because it depends. Are you going low lawn like a low pylon are you going extended pylon like seven feet off the water or a wakeboard tower or are you on the super fly high because all those things make a huge difference and i don't want to get into too much of that right now but i will answer any specific question that you guys 
post for me and that's why I'm doing this. Obviously going from a low lawn as I call it, the regular pylon height to a tower or uh, extended pylon, that reduces, uh, that makes it about 30% easier when you go from from three like a meter off the water to two meters off the water, uh, from three feet to seven feet off the water. If you go to super fly high, 14 feet off the water, oh my gosh, 60% easier. So all of that makes a big difference. Uh, and I went over this, this is about shoe skis, no shoe skis. Um, uh, he mentions here which ones he has. So anyway, you guys, I hope that helped. And if any of you guys have a specific question on this, what I recommend you do Get a video of you working on a specific thing. Take one thing, back to front, back to front on shoe skis, back to front on feet, back one foot shoe skis, back one foot on your feet. Submit a video, very specific question, not how do I look, a very specific question. In other words, if you're working on back one foot, say, hey, every time I get ready for this back one front, I, I'm freaking out, I, I, I know I'm going to rip my head off. That is perfect. I know exactly how to help you. If you're working on front one foots and you feel like there's spray piling in your face and like your feet are running off the water, that is a very specific question I can help you with, especially with the video. So anyway, I'm going to cut this shorter. God bless you guys. And do me a favor. If, you help, if this helped you, please like the video. Subscribe to it. Also, please leave me a comment uh, on the site where I'm going to send this link to you. And do me a favor and share it with at least one other barefooter so I can help more barefooters uh, enjoy that dream of getting their barefoot water skiing miracle. That's it. God bless you guys and expect a miracle.